Hello everyone, this is Fine from Tech Gaming Villa. Today I'm going to talk about the 2TB Sony Bravia X85K and the Sony Bravia X90K. You see the 2TB, the left side is Sony Bravia X85K which are direct LED VA panel TV and the right side is Sony Bravia X90K which is a full array local dimming TV. The X85K, I will say almost same as the previous model X85J. This TV actually uh, very good. Uh, it uses Sony's 4K x reality Pro picture engine and its picture processing technology is able to upscale any kind of source content up to 4K without any loss of information. The current 55 inch X85K price is 900 US dollar. 4K x reality Pro is uh, using a variety of noise reduction techniques to sharpen and refine images while patterns in images are compared with patterns stored in unique database to find the best hue, saturation and brightness for each pixel. Keep in mind that the quality of the source material is always important but from what I saw the X85 cap scale everything nicely and I didn't notice uh, any abnormal behavior during testing. This X85K is very nice and all the low budget ultra HD series models below the Bravi Exer series gets the low performing react LED light system without local dimming. This was the case with the X80K and it couldn't be any different with the X85 either. The direct LED system is using light behind the included VA panel but is much less capable than a mini LED or even a full array local dimming system which means far less brightness output, less light accuracy and lower contrast which means that blacks will appear more grayish than true blacks. To be honest, I'm not surprised as having a direct LED system is pretty common the last few years in Sony's lower end category and in line with what I've seen in many other TVs with a similar price. At least the VA panel in combination with the direct LED light system makes the X85K much less prone to any major burning problems that plague with many OLED models. One of the most important characteristics of a HDR TV is no other than its brightness output. It's unfortunate that many lower tier HDR TVs don't have the necessary brightness output to make HDR justice, even with manufacturers advertising them as such. As the X85K seems to be so similar to the X85J, I'm curious to see if uh, this measurement is almost similar or not. The TV retains uh, good image quality. But anything above that colors, shift, brightness and black levels integrated takes a huge hit and the overall image quality degrades a lot. As a result, the TV may not be suitable for use in a family room where many members will be using it from various angles. In case you plan on buying this one for this purpose, I would suggest you to try it out first uh, before making a decision if it is good enough. If I talk about HDR, the HDR support is another area where there is practically no difference in the last few years as it seems that most manufacturers have closed a site to go with. But 2022 Sony went for parity, so all their new releases support the same HDR formats, no matter the capabilities of the TV itself, which is more of a marketing thing and not for the best of what the TV can really do. In total, the X85K features the standard trial of HDR protocols that included uh, the basic HDR10 which is required for 4K Ultra HD playback, HLG that is used in broadcasting and lastly the more advanced Dolby Vision that uses dynamic metadata and offers the best quality from the free available. For one more year it seems that Sony stays away from Samsung's HDR10 Plus and frankly if there is no major development in the future I don't see Sony ever supporting it. If you really need both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision, you will have to look for another manufacturer like Hyzin or depending uh, the reason you leave Panasonic or Philips. The X85K comes with wider co wide color gamma support which is one of the fundamental requirements for HDR content viewing as it can make the colors look more vivid and lifelike. If I compare X85K with X90K, X90K is a full array local dimming TV and is a superior TV. It's great for HDR and HDR, both uh, section HDR and HDR better than X85K. This is the more premium full array LED TV. Uh, the Sony is using a high quality VF panel here with full array backlighting and a total of 54 dimming zones, which is more than twice compared to its predecessor, leading to darker blacks and by extension higher contrast ratio only and only if you have had first-hand experience seeing an OLED in person would you be able to tell the difference. Sony has really upped its color 
and contrast game this year, putting many rivals on Novish. What's impressive though is the overall color accuracy. It is simply spot on, even right out of the gate. For those finicky about the X90K gives you ample settings to fine tune the display including, among other things, a dedicated Netflix calibrated mode. The panel can also get very bright even by LED standards, but wing angles could be slightly better. Again, LED TVs like these aren't known for stellar off-axis being out, but Sony has some neat workloads uh, to get past this shortcoming to improve it, in general some of its other TVs. It would have been nice if those were included here. There is a light sensor in this uh, X90K TV that is said to automatically tweak brightness levels based on ambience, which is a nice touch. X90K is a 4K TV with support for HD10, HLG and Dolby Vision playback at its heart lies the next generation cognitive processor exert that's basically doing all the heavy lifting in the background. Sony's processing is easily among the best in the business with big focus on delivering true to life colors with some extra gene or pop that adds a bit of spice and flavor to content without going overboard of anything. The balance is just about uh, right and the experience almost cinema like the X90K handles HDR very well. Motion and upscaling too are fine, though sometimes fine details in HDR content can get overpowered, particularly in darker scenes. In Sony's defense TVs like the X90K are primarily designed for high resolution content and for what it's worth, you can fix some of uh, these minor issues in settings. Being a high-end Sony TV would imply it should work well with latest consoles, particularly the PlayStation 5 and it does do that very well. There were four HDMI ports in this TV two of which are HDMI 2.1 with 420Hz and variable refresh rate support. One of them doubles as an ER port. Auto low latency mode is also available here. So sh should you buy X90K? I will say X90K punches above its weight class on so many levels. It's hard to not come out impressed with it. This TV in fact darts the line between traditional LED and OLED with such a fine degree of attention and craftsmanship unseen or unheard of before. It's become one of my favorite no-nonsense high-end TVs of 2022 and while it's not perfect, it surely keeps people looking for the best of both worlds, which is close to OLED level color and contrast at a relatively more mainstream pricing, a wholesome package deal. So that's it from now. If you like this video, please subscribe and press the bell icon for future and video subject. Thanks for watching.